how's it going? This is Carlos, your host of the Just Fans Podcast. Thank you for joining us this evening. I got Rios in the house. Let them know what's up, Rios. Well, let me start off by saying the discourse all day on Twitter has been about 2017. Um, as the great poets degenerate, degeneration X said, y'all can suck it. <laughs> all right. Real, Reels with a banger right there. <laughs> Real, Reels with a banger there. All right. Uh, then we got... Who is this man? Poppy? Where you been? I'm back. <laughs> He's I'm back. back. He was on a hiatus. The dude I'm was on waiver. <laughs> yeah, man. It's been, been a article to Venezuela, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was stuck in traffic, man. That's what you it was. Were, we had sent you down to AAA, and now you're back on the, with the big <laughs> leagues again. <laughs> nice. I was down with, with JJ and, and Myers down there. You're struggling. Actually, JJ but, uh, is. Uh, I'm sorry, Myers is back on the lineup, sir. He's yeah, and I, and I feel like that's a mistake. We can talk about it in a minute. <laughs> All um, right, and of course, we got a good old friend, uh, Ace Town Wheelhouse from Lockdown Astros. What's up, man? How's it going? Thank you for joining us again. As always, a pleasure to have you on. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. You know, um, I was I was glad I got to send the message for y'all's one year anniversary. Sorry, I couldn't make it, but um, I appreciate the shout out and just, I mean, you guys keep killing it, man. I don't, I don't know, I don't know how y'all do it because. You know, there's a lot of podcasts out there, and I think what you guys do, you really separate yourself from the competition. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Oh, man. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. We don't we don't even know how we do it. We just kind of <laughs> we don't even know. Yeah. What we're doing. There you go. That makes it feel better. We don't even know what we're doing. Let so. me say something, man. I love I love, I love the hat that you rocking today, man. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. I, when I, I was at the store and I almost want, bought one just like it. Dude, so look at this. Oh, so it's wow. got the 2017 World yeah. Series, and I got the 2017 2022 World Series. I was clean, oh, yeah. man. So oh, I got yeah. the I got the new like the gold one. Same. The the championship nice. one. Nice. Yes. It was like yeah. it was I was between this and like a like a cream, like reddish, pinkish type thing. Mm. I'm like, damn, bro. Like I wish I had money like that, bro. My producer won't let me buy anymore. <laughs> right, it goes a shoe again. Yeah, no, I, I got this one. We had I had to get this one. I mean, it's, nice. now I do the the snapbacks. I don't know about y'all. I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't find the snapback. I wanted it that Academy, day that bro. I went. That day that I went because I bought it at the stadium. I don't know where you got it from, but Academy. <laughs> yeah, when I when I got to the stadium, they didn't have the snapbacks. They only had this one. Ah, uh, I see the fitted ones. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I just came from a trade show. Uh, I am uh, drunk as hell. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah. It's so... only drunk, drunk uncle on Astros Twitter, and it's not you. <laughs> I know, man. Yeah, you sure. and you and you and Evan Gaddis been hanging out. Yeah, dude. Let's, let's yeah, let's not let's not hang out with Evan Gaddis right now. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta separate okay. from him. Okay, my bit. man, my man Gaddis, right? Yeah, I will take no slander from, from Gaddis. <laughs> I'm not saying I defend everything he stands for. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, there's worse people. Out there. <laughs> we got it. We got it. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah, oh, that, guy, right. that guy has been entertaining as hell. That's all I'm gonna yeah. say. All right, so let's really quick let's jump into this. Uh, right now, the Astros are killing it right now against the against the Pirates. Yeah, which is great to see. It feels like the the old Astros are back in town. You know, we're we you know we started off with a slow with a Can slow. Can we even start. say that, man? Because it's it's been rough. It has. I mean, it has been a slow start. Like it has been a slow start. And and, and yeah, H-Town, you let me know if you know if I'm wrong here. It's it's. I just felt like you know the guys are getting used to each other. The chemistry is kind of coming in, and of course you that got... shouldn't be an issue. That should. Well, we, I mean, we brought pretty much. Every... We're running it back. Like the only the only new newcomers uh, are Braille and. Uh, that's we got much jokes. It. You got jokes. 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 jokes, yeah. yeah. So that, how that's do you... pretty much it. Like yeah. it's, it, it shouldn't be that that much of a of a challenge to like build. Right. I mean, yeah, on paper you would think so, right? So like Ace Town, uh, that's one of the reasons why we brought you here. What do you think, dude? Like, what do you think is has been the reason why the Astros kind of got off to like a slow start here? It looks it looks good right now, but you right, know, what do you think? Well, I mean, you you got to take into account. Jose Altuve not being in the lineup. I mean, that he is he is a heartbeat of this team. He is the heart and soul of this team. Um, you know, Bragg, you know, Alex Bregman's off to his typical like slow start. I mean, a really slow start. Oh, um, bad. Yeah, pretty bad. In, now, in today's game, he should have had four walks, but he had three walks, a strikeout. I think he has a hit now. But yeah. two of those, two of those four pitches that they that they called strikes were balls. And so Bregman should have had a fourth walk of the game. 
Um, you know, Jordan and Tucker have started hot. The starting pitching has not been locked down. You know, yep. Hunter Brown de- delivered their first seven inning, um, actually their second seven inning start, but the only but but the first one to actually deliver a win because when Framber did it, he did not get the win. But this brings opportunity though. Because now you have to start looking outside your regular contributors. Brantley's not going to be here till the first week in May. So what do great teams do? They find ways to win. You bring up Corey Jolks. And I'll say this. Ever since Corey Jolks has been on Locked on Astros as a guest, hey. day he hit a three-run bomb. The day after that, he hit a two-run double. And then he made the 26-man roster. He has started in seven of their 11 games. He's got a four-game hitting streak, and he's batting 296 right now. Then Mauricio Dubon's got a six-game hitting streak. Right. Yiner Diaz, every game he started, the Astros have won. Maldonado got a double today. So this team is going to have to win in ways they didn't win last year. The relief pitching hasn't been great. The starting pitching hasn't Mm -hmm. been great. And the offense has been inconsistent. So those things right there, with Altuve being out, Brantley being out, McCullers being out, There are a lot of obstacles. I say you take these challenges and put them on the Yankees, put them on the Dodgers, put them on the Angels, the Mariners. They don't survive these types of things. Like they struggle even more than we're struggling. Right. And at the end of the day, we are the team to beat. We have a target on our back. Everybody comes up to play with us or play against us. So if we're not bringing our A game and when you get 32 strikeouts in two games, and you're breaking records that way, a lot of non-characteristic things have happened with the Astros where they they strike out at an unbelievably low rate over the last five or six years. And this year they're striking out. They literally are tied for second in the league. Going into this game, I think they had like 95 strikeouts. Right. Um, They were tied with the Marlins. If you would have asked me, will the Astros and Marlins be tied for strikeouts after the first seven games of the season, first, you know, 10 games of the season, I would say there's no way. No. And that's where they're at. But let things happen. Trust the process. This team's going to figure it out. They came into Pittsburgh's game today attacking the count early, and it's paid off. And so that's why they're up 8-2 to two as we speak right now. Yep. So, they're so, dominating right now as let, we, let, as we let, saw. Let me, and that's a good thing. Like you said, these obstacles, it just makes the team stronger. Like it just, and like you said, I don't think any other team right now has it in them to go through these type of obstacles. Like you said, you said it yourself, all two ways are heart and soul of this team. You know, you're missing Lance, you're missing, you know, um, you're missing Michael Michael. Brantley. And so, and then the, the, the relief pitching hasn't been as great as we're used to, I guess in a way we're kind of spoiled, right? (laughs) It it hasn't been that way. So that, that's exactly my point. I I wanted to bring that up because I was like, man, that that's something that I haven't seen this season. Now, again, we're just a few games in the season. Of course, it's not the end of the world or anything. And yeah, you're 100 percent right. Of course, you know it, it, it's it's those are the issues that I saw. But I think slowly, like these last two games, the Hunter Brown just dominating that that uh, that that game against the against the Twins. That was amazing. Yeah, they didn't have the Correa, they didn't have you know uh, Vasquez in there. But I mean, give and take, right? But yeah. to me, that that was a uh, Hunter Brown. I I I like Hunter Brown. Yeah, he came out to a slow start. The you know against the I think I think it's against the White Sox if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But then, um, I mean, what he did uh, uh, yesterday's game against the Twins, man, that was yeah, the Hunter Brown I want to see. Seven what, I, what I'll say, what I'll say yeah. about Hunter Brown is that he just needs to become consistent. Like, oh, yeah, and, and and you know, you know, um, Poppy, that's always been his thing, and that's something we've tried to cover on the show. Is that, I mean, this is his first season starting on the roster. Right. Last year when he came up. He was struggling with command of his breaking pitches. Yeah. He was struggling with keeping his fastball in the zone because he spins the ball at such a high rate because he does. I mean, he, he throws a power slider at 94 miles an hour. Yeah. He throws a ball that touches 97, 98, and he can do that constantly. Okay. He was hitting like 96.8, close to 97. And give this kid more innings, give him more reasons to be successful and have confidence, have the offense behind him pick him up. And you're gonna see my friend Mark um, Mark White on a, on a Twitter. He goes by Ghostros One. He calls him H Town Freight Train Brown because he said this kid 
has got a full head of steam. And when he yeah. gets rolling downhill, he's like a freight train. And, yeah. and, and I believe every bit of that. Hunter Brown's going to have a nice season this year. He may not be yeah. rookie of the year, but he's going to be at times. He may get pitcher of the month. He may get rookie of the month. He's just got to string together a few solid outings, and you'll see him rise to the top. Yeah, and that, that, that's what I need from him because we've seen him dominate games we've seen him like pitch like like a a, a already finished product and then we've seen him struggle pretty bad we're talking like luis garcia struggles kind of bad Mm -hmm. (laughs) right and luis garcia is my boy man and and the world baseball classic he was lights out whenever he was out there and this season i haven't seen any any of that it's weird. Yeah, I saw that too. Like, I, we, I, I had some high hopes in our one year anniversary show. We were talking about, like, man, Luis Garcia, because at that time when we when we filmed that, Cause, like, it cause was we like, knew, we knew my colors was like, going to be out. So we thought yeah. Garcia was going to be that man to step up. So I we were like, yeah, Garcia's cool. going to be lights out. And then it's just like, wow, we saw like, Gar- we saw Garcia just like struggle. I'm like, what is that? Bad, man. I think part of it is the pitch card, right? Because, you know, his, his windup is, you know, pretty unique and he's had to basically, you know, Cut it completely out because the pitch. Exactly. Line. Let me ask you this, Mr. Wilhouse, because we talked about it. Uh, I want to say months ago, right? Uh, when whenever the p- pitch clock was uh, first integrated, what do you think of it so far? Um, I hate it. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, personally, I think I think it's too quick. I think they need to allow more time. If I'm being honest, I understand it's here. So. I've stopped complaining about it just being here because it's here. But I think they I think I think they they are trying to micromanage the game. Yes. And I think when you try to micromanage baseball, you take out of it a lot of natural elements. I mean, there's been some pretty horrendous strikes called on batters, some pretty horrendous balls called on pitchers. And I'm like, wait, how did he not appear ready to you? It's too, it's too subjective. It's too, yes. mm-hmm. well, the umpire felt like you weren't ready. Well, now you're what, just leaving like, it for what, him. Are you well, a, a lot of the rules, a lot of the rules come down to the umpire. Though. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of things, balls and strikes at the end of the day come down to the umpire. Well, they do. And they so, and so I made a com- Yeah. So, so I made a comment on Twitter. I took a screenshot of Bregman's at bat where like two of the strikes were way off the plate. And, and I, and I added the, M, the, the major league baseball um, umpires union. Yeah. And I said, y'all clearly have too much on your plate. Y'all can't even focus on balls and strikes. So we just need robo umps. If y'all, <laughs> if y'all are paying attention to everything else, why are we making y'all call balls and strikes too? Because now you got to tell them now MLB seeing if the bat boy or bat girl is fast enough. Now they're checking their hands again. Now they're, it, it's just like, okay, well you've got 30 seconds because there's a guy here, but 15 seconds if there's nobody. And it's just like, too too many moving parts Mm -hmm. i think they tried to do too much too soon but what you have to remember is these are professional athletes and at the end of the day they still get paid millions and millions of dollars most of them well not most of them but a lot of them get paid massive contracts they are going to adjust and that's why they are only 750 major league players so they're going to make the adjustment as a fan i don't like the optics of it but I'm hoping that Major League Baseball at some point makes some tweaks and adjustments to it because I don't I don't like the injury probability. I don't like I don't like a pitcher being rushed because you rush a pitcher, someone's getting getting beamed in the dome. You know, I mean, there are just too many things that could happen that would be a negative effect, I think, on the game. See, I, I like it so far, but I do agree with you. It needs to be tweaked because there have been some like really weird calls, like some some games it feels like the umpires don't understand the rule quite completely. Some games it looks like the the the, the batters or the players in general don't understand the rule. I saw an at bat from it was in one of the pot uh was it the Padres? It might have been the Padres games where I want to say it was Manny Machado. Yeah, but try to call a timeout. Yeah, he put his hand up. Yes, yeah. Umpire. But I yeah. think I think he had because you you can still call a timeout, but you have to do it before the the is it the seven eight second mark yes you have to do it before uh, before a certain amount of time yeah and i think he did it like just a fraction of a second too late and the um just called it as a strike because he wasn't ready yes that okay. thing so it's just one of those things where it's gonna get some used to it like it's we're, we're only what 10 games into it yeah 
we're gonna it's gonna take some time to to get used to it. But I feel like like you said, a lot of these well, well all of these guys are professional athletes that get paid maybe not millions, but a lot of money to play the game. So I'm yeah. sure they're gonna make adjustments to it, and I'm sure the MLB they might not mess with it this season. Maybe by the time postseason strikes, we'll see. But uh, I'm sure in the future it's gonna be get tweaked a little bit. But I feel like this is gonna be a good thing for the game. In my- well, you know, the games are shorter, and if you do what I do, where you comment on games five days a week, and you have West Coast games, mm-hmm. you yes, really probably. don't mind shorter games. I mean, <laughs> that's that's the aspect of it that I do like. Is like, okay, I'm not up till two a.m. talking about the Astros beating the Mariners or something like that. The one thing I'll say though. When I went to the game, what was it last week, Carlos? Or the week? Yeah, before? when we were all there, I think it's the last game against the Sox, the White Sox. Okay. Yeah, okay. like when, when Luis Garcia just stunk it up, like real bad. Good lord. Um, by the way, that was my first game that I've ever been to where we've lost. So, Uh-oh. They, oh yeah, they, they killed my streak. Yeah. They killed my streak, man. Same, it, was like, same. it was like an eleven-year streak in the making. Wow, uh, that's, that's impressive. We need but uh, he, uh, like, I, I, I downed two beers like hella quick. And b- before I, I before I knew it, the game was over, and I'm like, "Crap! <laughs> I don't. I haven't had time to like sober up. <laughs> What's going on?" <laughs> but I do enjoy the games a little bit shorter, like, you know, like as long as much as I love the game. We talked See, about this in the past. Like, I don't, I don't need it to be three hours. I'm, I'm good I, with know, two. I'm okay. Two I'm okay with the three hours. That's the thing. I think that I think the time clock. To be honest, I know they do it in the minors. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know. To me, it, it just kind of takes away from the game itself. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm okay every with rule, now, Every rule is going to feel like that. Right, though. right. Now I agree with, with Ace Town. Yeah, when you get those West Coast games and you feel and, and afterwards you got your reactions, then I can see where that's like, you know, where that where that's like, okay, the, the, the clock is actually very convenient at this point, you know? Exactly. But, uh, as far as you're talking about the purity of baseball, I just if, if you're looking at, at, at it at that, at that point, like I could see I, I don't like the, the, the clock. At that point, I'm like, you know what? You're messing too much with the game. The you know? purity of baseball is, is to me, is one of those arguments that that really doesn't hold a lot of weight because the okay. game has been changing for a very long time. That's true. That's true. And, I mean, and, and, a... and we and we've and I would say because the game is how old? Like a hundred, hundred something years. Yes, like, it's as old as Rios. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> almost almost as old. I think Rio was five years old when, when baseball was invented. Yeah, I think he met Babe Ruth. <laughs> he played with him. Yeah. I think he was uh, here when, like... Bad boy for the Yankees. I think he was here when uh, Rios, Rios met um, met Cortez when he came over from Spain. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. How, how was Cortez? <laughs> was um, Columbus that mean? <laughs> it, was. <laughs> it, was, it was a dick. Um... <laughs> But uh, no, like I feel like the, we've kept the game. I think we like I think the MLB and the fans and the players, every, mm-hmm. everybody has done a good job with the game for the past hundred and something years. We've made the necessary changes that we've had to make, and I feel like this is just going to be one of those changes that you know, ten years from now, we're not even like hell, even five years from now, we're not even going to like discuss like, oh, like the the clock is too long or too short or whatever. So players are gonna get used saying, to it. Players are gonna get used it's to it. something that eventually people will just like forget about it. Yeah. yeah. What about oh, no. what about it, what, what about the band shift? Have you guys noticed? Like, I, well, you know, we well, you know today, uh, Kyle Tucker. Um, they actually showed a ball the other day that Kyle Tucker hit a line drive into right field, and and then they showed the same hit from a game last year. It, it was it was an out because everybody was shifted mm-hmm. today. He got a C and I'd single between second and first baseman, but had they been shifting the way they normally shift, he literally hit that ball right where they plant the second baseman mm-hmm. in then the in the outfield. And there was actually a shift violation. One of the players, I forget who did it, his heels were in the grass. And they gave the they gave the at bat, they gave the pitcher an automatic ball because what, they was said, that an Astros game? No, it wasn't the Astros game. Um, I I forget who it was. Uh, it was it was. Let's see, today's Monday. I think it was in um, Sunday. Um, someone had their heels. Um, the Lock On Pirates guys guy um, talked to us about it. He literally had his left heel or something wow. in the grass, and they called a shift infraction, and they gave the pitcher a ball. Wow. So you can't even like a step on the grass if you're an infielder. You have to stay. Both feet. You have to have four feet in the dirt 
on both sides. The, of the, the full the full feet, or can you have like all your feet? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. It's starting to sound like football, y'all. <laughs> well, yeah. What do you mean the no fun league? Yeah, yeah, I, still, I, I still don't know what a catch is in football. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I still don't Dude, understand yeah. what a catch is. Wait, what, catch what's, a, to run? what's a football move? They have football to make, move. What's I... a football move? <laughs> the yeah, that was, that was lame. I still yeah, don't know what that means. That <laughs> You're going to have yeah. to do a baseball move yeah. <laughs> if you want that to be an out. No, I said the last year thing. One of the people that would benefit the most from the manning the shift would be Kyle Turk because a lot of yeah. his, you know, outs last year was him, you know, hitting into the shift. And you yeah, see this year, but he's not going to worry about it this year because he's going to j- drop bombs. That's all he's going to well, do this year. <laughs> I'm telling you, I so I am I am keeping up with four different dynamic duos, and I haven't updated it. I'll probably update it next week. I've got Tucker and Alvarez, Judge and Stanton, Trout and Otani, and Rodriguez and France in Seattle. Those are my four AL dynamic duels that I'm watching. I know there's others, you know, Vlad Guerrero Jr., all those guys. So I'm not discrediting anybody else. I'm just, I was like, I wanted to pick four to watch and compare. And up until the other day, Tucker and Alvarez were beating them all in OPS mm-hmm. and on base percentage and in home runs and RBI. And um, at the time they had 18 RBI. And now I think, um, I think um, Alvarez has now, he has now like 16 or 17 just, just by himself. So, the Astros have this dynamic duo, these left-handed power hitters um, that are just absolutely going to murder the baseball. And I think a lot of people have Kyle Tucker as a dark horse yeah. for the MVP this year. Same, same, same. This is his year. Unless, unless like, the Angels and Otani go crazy, I think Tucker <laughs> Dude, is uh, – Can we it. just pay him can, – can we just all agree that if there's one player – now, I'm all for staying the course. I'm all for success. I want World Series titles. That's what I want. But if there's one guy, if there's one guy that you're going to pay, Otani. can it be Kyle Tucker? <laughs> yeah. Not, uh, I don't have $500 million to give Otani. I'll yeah. start to do it right now. I'll sell my liver. I'll help, I'll wow. help him however, however I can. Is that bad? Otani is, I would say, already the face of the league. Already. Well, yeah, he is. But I, I just I just don't see like if cranes like I literally saw a shirt today. Get this in CVS. Um, I posted a picture of it on Twitter. It said Houston strong and it has Justin Verlander. Hold on. I got it right here. Jose Altuve, Carlos Correa, George Springer and Dallas Keuchel. <laughs> Damn. Wow. <laughs> wow. Only, only one of those guys still with only it. one of those guys. Yeah, only there. one of those is only there. Wow. Yep. And only two of them have have two rings. The other, the other, the others don't. You know. We, yeah, but I going back to what you said. Yeah, Cal yeah. Tucker should be that guy. Yeah, Cal He's Tucker like, should be that guy him. because because you know we we have struggled since Springer left on the center field position. We got lucky with Pena. I would say like I wasn't as comp- like I was I was rooting for the guy, but I wasn't as confident as he was going to have the season that he had last year. And uh, you know he he looks like like the real deal. We know that, but losing Kyle Tucker, like imagine like next year, or like well not next year, but like a few years from now, where if we let him walk or whatever, we're 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 still thinking like oh we we got to figure out the center field position and the right field position, and like I mean the left field right now, like even if Uncle Mike comes back, how do we know he's gonna stay healthy all year? Yeah. Joke's been looking okay. So far, but uh, is he is he gonna lock that position down? Like uh, without Kyle Tucker, or whole outfield is a big question mark. Nope. Yeah, it is. It is. But you know, right now, I, I I think what the Astros have to do is they have to hope that basically my hope is that Chas McCormick really takes a bull by the horns because mm-hmm. it's it's not gonna be Myers. No. Um, but does it have it? Does does it does he have it in him to be the center fielder for this team? Well, I think until you find a permanent solution, I think he's your best option. Well, he, I he, think is, he, he is our best option, but like I so so I think he has a potential. Will he? I don't know. That's yet to be seen, right? Because he came in 
after what Myers was injured and when he tried to come back, he wasn't really worth anything. Right. Um, Jordan Alvarez is going to be in left field a lot. He's going to be in left field and, a lot. And I don't know how I feel about that, if I'm honest with you. Because you're putting yeah. him at risk, too. You, you put him at risk. Like, uh, we, we saw him uh, getting reps uh, on left field, you know, like, like you said, like we know he's gonna play that a lot. But he's got a cannon too. He does. He does. He does. <laughs> but if he gets injured, God forbid, with how spotty the offense has been, yeah. without Altuve, without Mike, you know, without Jordan, it's like you're asking and Bregman the way he's been playing. You're asking Kyle Tucker to just hit a grand slam every single game. Yeah, you know, um, but I think this year. You have to take – you have to play with the hand that you're dealt, right? Right. And you've got Mauricio Dubon right now earning more starts than David mm -hmm. Hensley. And Mauricio Dubon's actually doing a hell of a job. He he's is. a very good defensive second baseman. He's not Altuve. But you've got to have someone hold that position down until Altuve comes back. And if Altuve comes back and Dubon is still hitting and still playing the field the way he is, then you don't have a problem resting Altuve – every second or third day if that's what you're going to do because you know you got a guy that can step in i'd rather have dubon at this point than than uh, mr diaz who's in oakland now because diaz just can't stay healthy yeah and that was his biggest problem and he couldn't hit well, we right love you. we love you diaz but god well well he had potential because remember he was an all-star at one point at one point yes he was he was an all-star he, he, he just couldn't stay on the freaking field but i really think that if we deal with any other injuries or any other uncertainties, you could see someone like a Dearden or Pedro Leone. Look, Pedro Leone and Dearden are hitting the cover off the ball right now. Corey yeah. Lee's hitting the cover off the ball right now in AAA. Yeah, Corey so Lee's looking good. I've seen that. You just, you just, I mean, the Astros are going to have guys step up that the way you win a second championship back to back is you have guys do things that aren't the guys that are supposed to do things. Correct. And that's where the Astros, I think, have a strength. And we haven't seen it yet, but I promise you the AL West is not going to look anything like it is right now because Seattle and um, it's like Oakland at the bottom. They'll stay there. It's Seattle and us. We're, we're above Seattle, and it's the Rangers and the Angels, and they're like five and four. So it's not like they're – they're world beaters right now. Yeah, but what do you, what do you think about them though? Because like, because we know that we we should we should win this division. There's well, no question about it. But what about because because the, when the Angels win, man, they actually look pretty decent. Look, the Angels. Do do y'all remember last year what the Angels did? Yeah. Do you remember yeah. how they were leading the division in 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 like June? And I even said it by the end of June, the Astros will be on top and they'll never look back. Yeah, I've already said by mid June the Astros are on top of this division, if not before. If, if they before. don't do it by May, I will be shocked because even though the Angels are hitting the ball, they're only five and four. Mm -hmm. They're only five and four. We are in the weakest division in all of Major League Baseball right now, and they're five and four. The Rangers are five and four. The Rangers already lost Odorizzi for the season; he's gone. Is he fully okay. gone? Gone for the season. Shoulder Damn. surgery out. Done. Now. Next man up. Oh, that's right. They hired four pitchers that are injury prone. Evaldi, will he be healthy all year? DeGrom, I don't know. Will he make 15 starts? That's yet to be seen. And the Angels pitching, can it sustain itself over the season? Now, if the Angels pitching can sustain success for a long period of time or in long periods of time, enough, enough streaks, they may find themselves trying to sneak into the wild card race. But I – think that's highly improbable. As I long as they keep hitting the ball like the way they have been, I'm not ready to count them out just yet. Oh no. Well I just I just got no I got zero faith in in what they have there. I, I mean true, true, same. But yeah. like like if there's a team that I would love to see in the postseason would be the Angels. See I would love the Angels to get in the postseason and play the Yankees. And yeah. beat that game. would be mm -hmm. that would be beautiful. I just want to I just want to see Otani and Trout like when it matters the most, you know. Yeah, I want to see Otani and Trout in a key game, and the Astros strike them out, and they go zero for five with four strikeouts. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, I remember last year we went to a few Angels games, and Mike Trout couldn't get a lick. 
No, oh, Mike all, Trout's man. terrible against the Astros. Mike yes. Trout's terrible against Framber. Like, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, like yeah. he couldn't he couldn't hit a watermelon, man. Like at all. Okay, so get this. This is a, this is um, a fun little fact we uh, we tuned into last night when we were looking at the Pirates roster. G Man yeah. Choi, right? Played for the Rays. Yeah, we we played the Rays how many times? Like a ton of times, right? Yeah. Today was the first time he's ever faced Framber Valdez in his career. And his first at bat was a home run. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's Framber today. It was a solo shot. Oh. And and I, I put that on Twitter. Someone's like, wait, are you sure? I'm like, look, I'll go double check, but I'm pretty sure he has never faced Framber Valdez until, mm-hmm. until 4-10-23. <laughs> what do we think about the race? Because they, they look good, but they, they, they I don't think, good. have they, have they faced like a difficult team though? They have not. I have mean, a- yeah, but you can say that. Well, I mean, we we faced one of the worst teams, the Tigers, and we gave them the the their first two wins of the year, their only wins of the year. So True. I, don't, I don't think that matters all that much. I don't think the Rays are a. I mean, they are ten and zero now. They're they're plus sixty three. Excuse yeah. me, plus sixty three on run differential. They're not a ten and zero team, but with them, the Yankees and Toronto, I mean. Look, I just hope that division beats beats each other up. Yeah, just I'm, like the I'm NL loving, East, yeah, I'm loving you know? that. Yeah, but I think that's the strongest division. T- look, Tampa has the ability to not be in the playoff picture in, in on anybody's board, but yet make a surprising run in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And but I like our success against them. We, I, I, I can definitely see Toronto right. so, like slipping off a little bit. They, and do they always slip off? They yeah. yeah, they always slip. They so were close like the. Yeah, it's kind of like when oh gosh, it's kind of like the Texans, you know, like yes, we got a playoff team. Oh, the the Bengals. Oh, we got them beat. You know, twenty one nothing against the Chiefs. Oh, never mind. It's the second half. You know, like <laughs> like. But well, you have, well, you have to bring that up, dude. Sorry, <laughs> man. When you, when you bring up well, the Blue Jays last year, I really thought were were the team for us to yeah. beat in the AL. I was really afraid of the Blue Jays, and then they choked. I, I'm actually glad that we didn't play them. I'm actually glad because I feel like th- they matched up against us pretty well. They did very. They did very well. And it always feels good to be the Yankees, anyway. So. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. always that's. All right. I'm up. looking forward to to October just so I can see them lose one more time. Get swept again, Chef Kiss. <laughs> and they have such an inferiority complex too. Like like they're so they're so they're so intimidated by the Astros now. Yeah, that all they do is talk about their rings and all this stuff, and I'm like, oh god, quit talking about like they sound like Cowboys fans. Like, what's the last like, time they won? I mean, they are Cowboys fans. They like, are 2000, Cowboys 2009. Fans. 2009, bro. Well, like that was like 45 years ago. Who cares? Yeah, my son was like, my son was like one. He's like 14 now. <laughs> He's almost <laughs> driving. <laughs> it's like it's gonna become like the Cowboys. Like they. It is. You're absolutely right. It's like the Cowboys. Like you have the they. You talk about the rings, and then you haven't done anything relevant. And you know, in this era, so it's like, what's you're bragging about something that most most of these people that are bragging about probably weren't even born then, or yeah. or were just kind of like, you know, I don't they, remember. They, they, they don't jumped remember, the bandwagon yeah. because of like, oh, it's the Yankees. The same people that are the same same people that are Lakers fans, Cowboys fans, the Yankees fans. Like that, those all those three usually go together. Well, the Lakers yeah. have actually won stuff recently, but. No, I mean like the fan as far as far as the fandom goes. Not oh yeah, they'll, as, suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll suck. <laughs> no, they're fans of the, all three teams. I, yeah. If you if you see a, a Yankee fan at a, at a Laker game, guarantee he's a he has, he's a Cowboys fan as well. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I've, seen, like, I've seen I've cars. Like, I've seen cars yeah. here in Houston that will have like a Texans sticker and then like a Yankee sticker. I'm like the hell out of no, here, bro. What? My favorite, <laughs> dude, my favorite one is the one that has a Cowboys star and then the Astros logo next to him. I was like, no, no, no. Stick with your Rangers. Stick exactly. With, Get can't have both. Stick with your Rangers. Now. Nah. Back to South Oklahoma for you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Before we uh, keep going, uh, Rios, it's about halftime, so you know what time it is, right? Yep. All right. Halftime with Rios. Here we go. Beer of the week, Rios. Go for it, bud. What you got? So this week, I have a beer from the year I was born, 1909. Shine. God damn. <laughs> so I've never had it before. So I was like, let me give it a, let me give it a shot. Uh, so this is a lager. It's you know, pretty light beer. I actually like it. It's um, 
real smooth. I like, I like it better than the original Shiner because basically this is like their original like recipe when they first came out, you know, 1909. It's pretty good. Very refreshing, very light, very easy to drink. I give it 9 out of 10. What do you compare it to? Like what other beer would you compare it to? It's similar to the, the Shiner, like the ones you see in stores now, but this one's a little bit different. It tastes a little bit different, but I like the different tastes. When was World War One? Nineteen seventeen. Nineteen seventeen. Okay. Well, fourteen to seventeen. Okay. Wow. Were you there, Rios? How was it? Yeah, I was on the front lines. <laughs> <laughs> I was there when they put when they put soccer on, on Christmas. What's your well, What's your KD? What was your KD? <laughs> oh man. Oh, oh dude, that was man, fun. You guys are going hard in the paint. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, we, it's 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 it's. I haven't been here it. for like I haven't been here for like what two weeks. Three Dude, he has not. Poppy has not been part of the show for like two weeks. People have wondered where he's been. I was like, eh, he'll work. Like, work, on has been, work has been crazy, man. Yeah. Well, I heard I heard Rios has Jesus beeper number. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rios is your social security number one. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh. oh, dude, I'm sorry. It's it's just funny. It's just, with you. It's just funny. Hey, show us your pantry again. <laughs> all right so ace tell this is what we did once we were uh real i don't know if i told you i can't remember if i did or not we we always bring it up so he, he shoots his uh you know his backgrounds is like living room right right but before that he used to like uh, you know in record kitchen. in his kitchen okay and so because he has a little round table it was actually a really nice table but the background of it would be like his pantry and he would leave the door open <laughs> Dude. Remember, Rio's is a single dude. He lives, but you know, he, he has his own I house. Tell you, right? I tell you, Will House, that there was not a goddamn thing on that pantry. <laughs> it was empty. It was. was, it, was it, 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 he didn't even have any rice aroni or something in there. Nothing, bro. Not, not, not like like Chef Boyardee, like nothing, nothing, nothing at all. It was empty. It was like the shelves. I don't think. It was like you have a, you got a brand new house. I don't think there's ever been food there. Like there's like there's it's like completely like you don't even have to wipe the and, shell. And like, then you would think and then you would think like oh all his food's probably in the fridge. You know he likes his stuff fresh or whatever. You open that fridge, it's like beer, two two twelve cases of like Modelo's or whatever, and then like one apple. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And I, I told I told Reels, I was like, yeah, do, do you need help? Do you, do you need us to help you out a little bit, bro? We got you if you need us. He's like, no, I'm just, I just like to eat out a lot. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's awesome, man. You see like an old Pringles can, and then you go to his place. <laughs> no, and that's the best part. Once we were, we were I went to his uh, place, and we were watching, uh, we used to stream, not, not stream, but like the reaction of the, the TV show, The Last of Us, right? Okay. And so... Uh, whatever, great. I love that show. And so I, I went over. I was like, "Hey, Rios, do you have anything to eat?" And I kind of knew in the back of my head that was a no. And he's like, "Hey, there's some chips in the pantry." I was like, "All right, cool." I go, I go, and there's a box. I'm like, "All right, great." I go in there. The box is it's just a box. It's empty. It's there's empty. nothing there. And I was like, "Wow." Here, Rios, I'll do your due diligence. Like rather than I throw it in the garbage can. Rios like, hasn't eaten but- actual food in like 25 years. <laughs> You like you like going to his pantry and it's like that freeze dried ice cream from NASA. <laughs> he just opens the window and opens just takes in the sunlight. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's all he gets. Oh. Dang, Rios, you take a lot of abuse on this show, man. Yeah. Now nah, we is, take turns. We take turns. We take turns. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's Poppy. Yeah, yeah. I was like, dang, you know, these guys are real nice to me. Maybe I just need to hang out more. And I'll- nah, you're good. You're you're you're, you're you have an we, wanna, we want you to come back, so that's why we don't go. Yeah, we want you to come back. That's why we, we don't go crazy. Nice. You're like, we've got trust. We got all kinds of stuff up here. We just don't let it come out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Oh, you're good. So, so, so uh, we're, we're, before before we 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 finish or whatever. So far, we're ten games into the season. What are we thinking so far? What are we looking forward to? I think you're I think you're looking forward to, you know, Framber put together a solid start um, as we as we wrap this up. Um, Valdez, seven innings, five K's, only two runs. He did have five walks. I think some of that had to do with Mm. the umpire not being great. But then you only had to give up two innings, one to Matan, one to Martinez. If this pitching staff starts rounding out seven inning starts, if this offense becomes more consistent, averaging five to six runs a game, then I think you see them start to slowly, you know, chip away at the lead. 
I pick them to go under 500 for this month because we do have some tough teams that we face before the end of the month. Mm -hmm. but if they put it together. They could easily be over 500, be in the division lead before May even gets here. Um, it's just going to be exciting when Altuve comes back. So be patient with them. There's going to be ups and downs. Winning is not going to be as frequent early on, but months that start with the letter A aren't typically friendly to the Astros. Mm -hmm. So just hang tight. It's a marathon, not a sprint. The Astros will be fine. What about – I know we're, we're ways away from the trade deadline or anything like that, but do you see us making moves – like something like, I don't know, like another, maybe another reliever. I or... think, I think you might see the Houston Astros go after a starter. Um, I think mm -hmm. that also depends on the status of McCullers, how quickly he comes back when he comes right. back, how effective he is. And the Astros may do something. I've kind of called for them to do something that they've never really done at the trade deadline, go out and get a really big name arm, you know, They did it in 2017 at the very end. That's why they changed the rules. It's called the Verlander rule, the stroke mm -hmm. of midnight. You're going to, you're going to see the Astros. The Astros are going to need to do something like that. And are if we, it's not a starting pitcher, they might bring in another bat if are, it's needed. Are we ready to give up on McCullers or? I'm not ready to give up on McCullers, but I really think that after this season, if he struggles in that starting role, you've got to be able to use his arm for another couple of years because you've got him on that five-year mm -hmm. contract. Yeah. yeah, I think he would be a great back-end relief pitcher. You could even have him as a long reliever. Um, you know, John Smoltz became mm -hmm. a very successful reliever, and he's younger than Presley. Um, Presley's still elite. So I'm not giving up on McCullers, but my confidence in him going forward the next couple of seasons being a starter – I don't have that kind of confidence in him anymore. He's got to transition at mm -hmm. some point. But if you sit down and ask Lance, he's a starter. Like he's he's the bulldog. You know, he's got the dog in him. So <laughs> we just we just have to see. We just we just have to see. He's got to stay healthy. If he can't stay healthy, you've got to transition his role from starter. It just that way you can use him. You know, why are you going to waste him and lose him for four months out of the year? There's no point. What do you think about uh, your what? What have you thought so far of Ronald Blanco? Renault Blanco, other than the last outing where 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 he didn't do great, you know, great has been lights out. Renault mm -hmm. Blanco has the ability to be a starter, mm -hmm. and he has a confidence. He has a confidence of the front office. He has a confidence of the pitching coaches, and fits in well. You know, um, the kid killed it in winter in winter ball. But I think this year you're going to see him be one of the key pieces of this bullpen when it's all said and done. All right. All right. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up because I know H-Town, you got to do your thing over there. So, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, dude. It's I, I, I love when you're here because it just it feels like now it's just more natural. You know, when you first came in, we were like, oh, and now you just become a friend of the show. And it's like, dude, I could just feel like now I just feel a lot more relaxed. I don't know about these guys, but I feel more relaxed. Just talking I just, to I just like that. We got somebody who knows what the hell they're talking about. Yeah, there you go. You're saying it. Bring up show. <laughs> it makes one of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, I, pre I appreciate you always on the show. You're always more than welcome to come in and, and hang out with us. So, you know. Yeah, always. thank you so much. No, not a problem. All right, well, I know you got to go. So, guys, that's going to be it for us tonight. Uh, the next time we come out, it'll be uh, on It's Live Saturday night through the Let's Talk Sports Network, through Hardcore Sports Network now, and, of course, through our uh, uh, Just Fans uh, podcast. So, thank you guys for joining us tonight. See you all later. Peace. I'm back, baby. <laughs> See you in three weeks, Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jinx it, bro. Don't jinx it. <laughs>